Hi, Reshan. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay. So, guys, so, so today it is the second day of Ideas Matters Most. So, today we have a, one of the spiritual practice of. So, she's having a business around it and she's helping a lot of people in terms of spiritual practices. And we are here a little from her in terms of how we can actually have a very healthy spiritual practice. So, I would like to welcome Reshan Kambojio. Let's give a round of applause for her. So, Reshan, like, how do you, how did you actually set up a business around it? And I would like to have a brief introduction about yourself yeah. so that everybody will know what exactly you are doing in terms of spiritual practices. Sure. Yeah. So, my name is Reshan yeah. and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Tarot Tree of Life. Okay. But originally, I have done my graduation from National Institute of Fashion Technology, Mumbai. I've studied fashion communication. And I had no thoughts that I'll be, uh, you know, doing something which is absolutely spiritual, which is absolutely into healing people and alternative and all, uh, holistic healing. So I was working as a visual merchandise manager with one of the top retail uh, companies in India. And uh, so I always uh, was inclined towards spirituality. And that was something I really like. Like I also liked the uh, window display and changes what I did according to my profession. But still there was a, you know, a thing that, you know, I can do something better. And to be honest, I really wanted to do something in which I can be my own boss. So I started healing myself uh, during the tough times I faced in my life and then my family members. And then I eventually came into the profession of healing. And not primarily tarot, because that is something people understand in a layman language. There are so many other things which I do. And it also helps people with their mental health, because most of the people today are suffering with so many things. Like if someone is hurt physically, we'll go up to them and ask, Aapko kya hua hai? But if someone is silent, locked in their room, no one will, they'll be like, uh, you know, maybe his nature is like that. So that's about it. Wonderful. So what exactly I'm summarizing here is like, uh, for a layman's language, everybody actually immediately understands her as a tarot reader or anything which is only related to that uh, that kind of purpose. But again, more in, she is more into healing, like anything related to mental health. I think she is actually doing it through energy, energies and right. energies of the people. So she told a wonderful statement that it is, if somebody is actually coming and telling us what they are actually facing, then it is easy for us to help them. But again, what if they are not coming up and speaking to us? So, she is actually doing it in such a way that uh, the energies, what she is actually sending out, is actually going to heal up. So, that is really wonderful, Resham. Thank so, you. what was the main challenges, what you actually faced when it comes to setting up such a business? And I knew that it is not easy to set up any business. And that this is a out-of-the-league business. So, how, what was the main challenges, what you faced? To be very honest, I never thought that it will become something uh, so substantial as it is right now. And my only purpose was to help people. Okay. Uh, no matter how much uh, fake it sounds, but it's actually true. I actually wanted to help one of my family members going through a very tough time. And then I also had, like my baby was really small. Uh, she was just 40 days when I decided, no, I'll come full time into this. And uh, there were challenges because she was too small. But I had my family support, my mom's support to be there with me. Not only that, it is difficult to build trust, uh, you know, uh, thinking that there are so many fake uh, babas and all of that. And people think that this is something like that, but actually not. I was here to understand people and I also studied two years of my psychology so that I understand the difference between energy, psychology, chakras, the aura, mm. manifestations. And I'm sure most of the students who are here in IIT and who visualize this success someday that we and because it's the top most institute in the entire I would say in the entire world one of the very top institute so this was their vision we how many students will come here right so they visualize they manifested and of course they did a hard work hard work ke bina there's no substitute to hard work Wo kaise hua? because they had that energy in them but sometimes what happens is no matter we have that energy, but our peers, pressurizers, our parents and so many other people and they, they pull down our energy. Yeah. So in that tough times when people come up to me, in that energy, I try to help them. And that is what happened when I started my business. And it peaked towards COVID because most of us lost our jobs and uh, there were so many deaths around it. 
people were full of grief they needed an ear a non judgmental ear so i think i was the one that time wonderful so uh, this actually sends out a message that no matter what is the business at all when you try to do something on your own not everybody really likes it right so as in i every or be out of every iitians like i think everybody is here very ambitious they wanted to do something on their own they wanted to do something for the nation they wanted to make an impact so when somebody is actually setting out for such a journey not everybody will really support you that is what your story is also saying that so we are really happy to actually have your story here no matter what is the industry is uh, whether it be in healing let it be in entrepreneurship let it be in application development let it be in education anything so people are going to face issues when you try to do that right so what is that one of the toughest decision what you made when uh, when you wanted to do something new and what is that one decision which actually changed everything first is definitely helping people okay second is the recognition so it becomes very difficult when you start a business and you lack motivation because you are trying and then you're not getting succeeded in mm-hmm. and kaun stay karta hai the one who keeps on going keeps on going no matter what i honestly uh, didn't wanted to look back and sound like a failure because even you know like how absurd it sounds like building a business around something spiritual but then now i have my money <laughs> i i am definitely earning more than what i was in my job and i'm my own boss i have my own team so definitely yesterday and today we are meeting a lot of uh, different industry people and again this is one of the rarest kind and she is actually being successful in it and this is one kind of something which we can learn from her so what do you have a message what as uh, a young entrepreneur who is over here what do they have to have a key quality if somebody over here want to go in a spiritual entrepreneurship like what let it be any area let it be whatever you are doing let it be in any areas of spiritual entrepreneurship what is exactly the three qualities what one person should have or let it be in simply entrepreneurship itself like what do you have as a key qualities what you suggest them to have when uh, you are setting on for such a journey uh, do you know what that there are a lot of elements yeah. from uh, institute like yours yeah. who are leading a very strong businesses like uh, there i i can't name the apps but there are many uh, astrology apps okay. and there are many apps so idea can be anything ideas Yeah. matter yeah. right how how is ideas. our um, you know name for today's discussion ideas matter most yeah. but the thing is that whenever you are coming with the idea you should be convincing pehle khud ko convince karo right before you go and convince others second you have to understand the niche market and most importantly if you fail to understand the feelings of your customer mm. unko kyun chahiye aapko paisa kamana hai sabko paisa kamana hai but what are you building are you bringing an any value to the table right. if you're not adding any value then it's of no point so always build your entrepreneurship around something which will be valued by people and you will be worth remembering for wonderful wonderful so uh, one more question resham because i know that when i'm also uh, into the healing and all the stuff not into in the ways you are doing right. but again i love actually helping in terms of uh, personal development uh, like uh, skill development all those things of young people so i know then when you're trying to help heal or uh, help people it is also important to protect your personal energy as well so as a matter of question like how do you actually balance your spiritual business while healing other people and also support or protect your personal energy like how do you have to do that uh basically strong boundaries Amen. no matter in whatever profession you are especially when you are a business owner you'll be working 12 hours 14 hours sometimes even 18 hours a day you lack sleep and sometimes people need you uh like 3 am mm. uh so i was there there was a time i was there 3 am 4 am but it started affecting me my energy my family I decided that there should be very strong boundaries around the work so that my focus becomes even better when I am working the clarity of mind is better mindfulness is better and so on okay so what are the uh, I have two questions right now like what are the present trends in spiritual business or spiritual entrepreneurship and how do you actually keep up with the spiritual trends which is actually changing in that because uh, i'm actually a little weak in that industry so i would like to know what are the present uh, trends what is happening in the spiritual entrepreneurship and how do you actually keep up 
uh, in order to be updated in that industry and how do you actually keep in the pace while going forward okay so sadly it is we like even we address it as trends but uh, the thing is that something which is helping people at the moment uh, many of you might have heard the word recce mm -hmm. few years back but yeah. right now you'll not hear that much okay because when something new comes in the market or something new comes in the healing industry like astrology is something very classic mm -hmm. it is never going to fade away but there are some things like i am an akashic record reader and that is something really loved by people because this taps into your conscious and subconscious energies and it really helps you understand your life purpose okay so when you know your life purpose especially like for example someone is in 11th or 12th grade and they're looking forward ki ab hum kya kare agla kya cheez kare so this tool really helps them to understand their life purpose okay. and when you actually follow your life purpose you are going to succeed wonderful wonderful any anybody over here have something to ask to reshin kampoch because uh, if you have any sort of questions just raise your hand because She is here in order to answer your questions in sort of any spiritual healing or any spiritual practices. So this was a wonderful session along with all the other speakers. I really got a lot of information from your session. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I could be uh, she deserves a round of applause for the work she did today. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs>